Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a pretty different video for you all. So this was an event that I live streamed on an academic Discord server that I'm on where I went over the introductory features of Todoist and briefly went over some of my Notion setup and then proceeded to answer questions and kind of go over things in a somewhat unstructured format. So you'll see Trello and Obsidian throughout the video. It was live and I didn't do too much editing. I just cut out different things. If I showed my email by accident, it's blurred. You can find all the timestamps and they get pretty specific on the video bar below and in the description. So if you are looking for like a niche thing, maybe a keyword, I was reading out comments from the chat. It was hosted on Discord, so I was reading from that chat, but I did cut out the questions themselves in case anyone's names or voices did not want to be put in the video. And lastly, I'm not affiliated with Todoist or Notion or Trello or anything shown in this video. I simply love using the apps and people were interested in a workshop Wednesday on this server, so I went for it. And I made a video out of it. It was live streamed last week all the way back in 20. 20. But without further ado, thanks so much for clicking. I hope you enjoy. I hope you learned something. Let me know what you think in the description down below. I'm definitely interested to hear if you want to see more of these for different programs. Of course, leave suggestions down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoy and I will see you on Friday for the devlog. So I'm someone who uses an app called Todoist quite a bit and there was a bit of discussion in it. Um, so we will start off with Todoist um, and then get the notion. Yeah, I mean, hey, sometimes the oldest ones can be can be great. But any any productivity app, I think if if it helps you, that's what that's what it's there for, right? Um, but the reason why we're starting off with Todoist is because for the first workshop Wednesday, I figured it would be best to use something that I am most used to. Um, but we will be going over Notion during roughly the second half. So, <laughs> just to sort of kick things off, um, if you've never heard of Todoist, at essence, it is a to-do list app, and its kind of main thing is all about natural language processing in a way. So when I first started using Todoist, I would pull out my phone or go to the website really quick. And let's say I would, you can hit the Q button or this little plus button on the top right, and you can add a task. So I would say, you know, um, start work on essay, do January 13th, it automatically highlights it. And then you put a little pound sign, uh, academics. And I have a project called academics. Now I'll be going over all these parts in just a moment, but it's just super easy to get things down, add task. And then when January 13th rolls around or whenever something's coming up, all of a sudden you can see, well, here it is, start work on essay January 13th. And that's what you can use this upcoming tab for. And so that's when I first started using Todoist is just ideas and it automatically reminds me at some point that things are coming up. So that's kind of why you'd use it. Jot down ideas, know things, what's coming up, and just a general to-do list. You can organize it into various different ways, which I'll go over in just a moment with all the features, but it's just a nice, it can be really simple, it can be really complex, and it works well with other programs. Uh, I use it mainly with a calendar app and Trello. I'm gonna make two projects during the next 10 or so minutes and kind of explain the features as I go along. So on the left here, you can see all of my different projects and I'll be sticking to free features for quite a while. Um, I do have a premium account, but you, you really you really don't need it. Um, so on the left, you have inbox. This is where tasks go. Um, whenever uh, you don't specify a project, it's kind of, you know, it's like your email inbox. Everything gets organized uh, or gets thrown into here and you can bring it to different folders. Today shows anything that is happening. You guessed it, today. Uh, you can specify times. Today I'm gonna buy new shoes right after this and upcoming. Um, upcoming shows you what's going on just today, tomorrow, and as long as you scroll, there's just more days to go. Um, and that's that's probably my favorite part. You put down a date, and if something's coming up in the next few days, for example, I'm playing Smash Bros with a friend of mine tonight, I wrote that down, so if someone says, hey man, you know, can you help me out with this tonight? I go, oh, hold on, let me look at what's upcoming. Oh no, I can't. Or hey, are you around uh, tomorrow, December 31st? I look at it, I'm playing backgammon with a friend. I've got karate. So I know exactly what's coming up and I don't have to look at a calendar exactly. Um, so that's what's nice about upcoming. Um, these are favorites. So favorite labels and favorite projects, um, which I will sort of ignore for now because labels are a premium feature. Uh, and again, you really don't need them. They're just aesthetic. And then you have projects. So this is really the big part of, I guess everything I'll be talking about is the big part of Todoist, but projects are how you essentially organize everything in Todoist. So going through here, um, we have projects and we have sub-projects. So content creation, for example, I have one Cadano Arcade here. I can go ahead and drag this out if I want to, or I can drag it underneath. And this is purely organizational. Um, when I'm adding tasks, you know, you don't really need subtasks. They don't do anything different, but 
from an organizational standpoint, it's just super nice to look at things this way. My projects are daily life. This is where I first started things. Um, I have different chores in here. Um, I'll go over these sections in a minute, but errands and chores, recurrent tasks, events and reminders, everything just organized in here. Um, even a wish list. I have some job postings that I need to apply to. I have gone through to make sure nothing personal is in here, but you never know. Something might come up. Hope for the best, right? So we have projects such as daily life. I have some content creation things. Um, one channel, two channel, a podcast that I have not yet started, but I have just ideas. So whenever I have an idea, I go ahead and I hit quick add task, type in my task. I hit food for thought and it will pop up right in this project immediately. I have some Twitch things and then I have academics. We'll be jumping into this in just a minute because I think a lot of us are academically or work oriented independent studies. And you can see my little independent studies on the side. And this is another uh, project I'm working on, and this is Dendrovite Development, and we have KOA on the bottom. Um, so that's kind of a quick overview of what Todoist looks like. I'm gonna go and set up two things. I'm first gonna set up um, this Narrative of Games project. So I have a class coming up this winter term, and I'm gonna be setting that up and show you what I might do and how, it set, and how to set up a project in Todoist while outlining some more of the features. And, uh, I'll also be setting up a project for Brazilian Portuguese, which is more of a hobby thing and how I might set that up differently, again, while going over the features. So hopefully I'm not speaking too fast or going too fast, but let me know at this point if you have any questions, and I do see one in Discord. Why would I use this instead of Trello or any other Kanban Scrum-based web application? Great question. Um, fun fact, I'm going to hop over to Lifestyle because this is where I use the board view, but um, this has a board feature. Uh, and I'll be kind of looking at this in a bit. They've recently just released this. Um, also, um, that nerd said it's, it's more free than Trello. I, I would agree there, there is a lot of, a lot of stuff in the free plan. It's also cheaper. I'll go over this in a minute, but I also use Trello. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and switch my boards here, which I believe you can now see my Trello screen. Anyway, I use, so this is my, my Trello board. We're not going to quickly really go over that, but for my main YouTube channel, this is where I have a bunch of the main tasks because the one thing about to do is that it's not really. If you have big tasks, you can make subtasks, which again, I'll go over in a minute, but I actually use both in tandem. So the main thing for Todoist for me is that if I'm on my phone, so if I go to inbox and I think, you know what, I want to make a video about Todoist, I go ahead and type in, um, you know, Todoist premium feature, uh, I don't know, list video. I type in pound sign, lifestyle videos, um, put a little tag at videos and okay, well, I have a video this week. I'm going to remind myself on January 4th, you hit enter and it's in there. It's super quick and easy to just get things out of your head. And for me, that's what productivity apps allow me to do. No productivity app alone will get you to, you know, eternal or enlightened productivity, but they can help you get things out of your head to give you more space in your head. So, uh, that's kind of a long answer to that, but, um, don't use it instead, use it with. That's kind of that's kind of my answer. I think for, for the first several months I used it, it was literally just a bunch of things in my inbox that would also go to daily life. That would just be ideas. Uh, I'm now gonna go ahead and set up the Narrative of Games project. So I have this academics tab here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete this. Um, for if everyone's curious, I'm a minor in game design, which is why it, this game is a thing. Uh, so I have this academics tab um, and don't show the two FA codes, Mark. <laughs> no links or emails here, right? Yeah, we're good. Uh, and this is where I put anything that's generally for general academics. This meme edit, for example, some classmates said, hey, you make videos. Can you make an edit of this? And I said, yeah, sure. I didn't have anywhere else to put it. So I put in academics. But, um, and I, we can look at my project in a second. But whenever I, this last semester, I deleted all the projects because all my classes finished. But I make a new project for every single excuse me, for every single class that I'm in. So if I go ahead and add a project below, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up an emoji. If you're on Windows, you can hold on the Windows key, press the period key. Another thing that I love about Todoist and Trello is that they support, you know, um, emojis. You can change the color to really whatever you want. I do grape because for some reason I associate school with purple. Uh, and then you can choose list or board view. I'm gonna go ahead and start out in list view and hit add. And boom, adds it right under academics. Um, then another part of Todoist uh, they released relatively recently is something called sections. So if you kind of hover over add task, you can see it glows red. If you go below, you can click add section. And essentially what happens is, you know, it, it's like in, in, uh, in my board view over here, 
uh, every different list is a different section. So let's go ahead and hop back over here. So I might do something like the little paper emoji um, homework assignments. Uh, let's go add another section. We'll do a little clock and we'll call this maybe quizzes and tests. And we'll add one more that just kind of says, let's do microscope, why not? Um, project work. We haven't gotten the syllabus for this class, so I'm making some guesses. But um, quick and easy sections. And if you're someone who prefers the board view, which can be very nice at times, it's really easy to just switch back and forth. So um, that's the setup of the narrative games, you know, different sections and stuff. You can change the view. And now if I ever have a homework assignment, let's say, okay, so I'll go to my inbox, right? Or I'm looking at today even. And they, I'm told, hmm, okay, you start, you have a project due in a week. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Q. Uh, we're gonna give this a little emoji, type in paper, choose one of these. And we're gonna say um, first quarter project, for example. Um, ironically to do is picks up first quarter. You can click on it to get rid of the, the auto detection of language, so to speak. I'm going to hit the pound sign and I'm actually going to type in projects. And as you can see, it pulls up the section that um, called project work in narrative of games. One problem with this is if I type in ideas, you can find all of the different sections that has ideas. But um, if you want to, you know, if I might type narrative of games, then I type a slash, then all of the sections of that project show up. So I have started to use this. So just to go over that one more time, you're told to have an idea. Pound sign, narrative of games, perfect. Hit the slash button, um, maybe backspace one. Hit the, ah, it worked the first time, did it not? <laughs> narrative of games. Ooh, now it's not working at all, that's fun. To do this, please. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I messed it up. Paper. First quarter project. We go ahead and click that to get rid of it. Narrative of games tab to full to autocomplete, hit slash and choose project work and hit add task. Wonderful. Now I'm going to go hop on over back to my narrative of games task. Oh, look at that. It's in project work, but let's say there are a few different components of the project. So if you click on it, you can add sub tasks and these are pretty, pretty, you know, nice and easy to do. So first quarter project, um, write up a plan, contacts, teammates, um, you know, first draft, rough draft, and you can do eternal subtasks. And what's nice is that they show up um, kind of below and you can kind of collapse them back and forth. Um, so if I hop on over to, let's say, Lifestyle um, NYU, these are the videos that I make on YouTube. I click on a keyboard I'm working on right now and you can see I've got a bunch of subtasks. And if it's a subtask, it'll show you what has been checked off. Um, and it's pretty nice to just kind of have that nice and organized there. And we'll show you on this little bottom corner of the card what's going on. So going back over to narrative of games, let's say we have a weekly homework assignment. I'm going to go ahead and type paper, weekly homework assignment. Uh, and I am going to hit weekly. Um, actually, maybe I won't. But the what I might do with this is call it a template task. So if I go over to these three dots, you can quite easily hit, where is it? Duplicate and blah, voila. Um, it'll go ahead and also adds any subtasks the previous task has. So yeah, that is the, you know, the overall project of academics, sub project narrative of games, uh, duplicating tasks and all that fun stuff. Now let's say we have, um, a bunch of things. So let's just say homework, quiz, test, project, and let's ignore the fact that we have beautifully organized sections explicitly for this. Um, suppose I think, okay, I have a homework assignment. That's kind of last priority. A quiz, okay, maybe that's priority three. A test, oh, that's pretty important. Oh, but the project, that's really important. Essentially, these are priority tags that Todoist has. It's priorities one through four. So one, two, three, four, red to no color. Um, makes sense. If you create a project and you type P1, it'll make it priority one, P2, priority two, three, and then four. Um, so on and so forth. So that's just a quick and easy thing. If you go to, I'll go to today, for example, because I have it organized this way. <laughs> I, you should not have this many priority tasks, by the way. Um, recently to do is introduced sorting. So whenever stuff happens, uh, you know, today, if I go ahead and remove all the sorting, it looks kind of messy. And priority tags are personally my favorite way to sort things. 
Um, and you just have all the P1, all the P2, all the P3, and all the P4. You can also sort by projects and uh, where project. Um, and this is also kind of nice because then you can say you can use the colors on the right, the names, and just look at all the things you have for this project today. Maybe you might look at, wow, that's a lot of daily life things that I have coming up. Um, so it can be very nice to organize this in different ways. And I would recommend you kind of mess around with that a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, group by actually group by priority and no sorting. Hit sort. And boom, little nice sections. So whenever I click add task here, it'll automatically add the proper priority as you can see on the bottom right. Okay, so this is the main window. If I ever add a task, so sample task, and I say narrative of games, hit enter, it'll come up here to the top. If I go add a task and let's say we just got assigned uh, some quiz, I don't know, quiz one, I type narrative of games, uh, hit enter to full auto complete. If I hit slash, I will get all the options of the sections within narrative of games. So quizzes and tests, for example, and you can see it pop up right here under quizzes and tests. To add one of these new sections, you can click on this add section button here. Um, and well, that will add a section. And that is to answer your question, where the headers come from. So if I go view as board, you can see no section or I, I call it unorganized. So I'm going to delete that. Um, but I could also just drag sample task over, boom. Um, Boom, done. So you could use the board view. Uh, and I, I use it as a presentation of ideas because I really like, it's much easier, I guess, when you have a really full project. So I have 148 things in this project. It's much easier to view things here. So what I'm actively working on, what's coming up versus having them all in this list view. So let that load for a minute. <laughs> so I have all the unorganized stuff here. Here's what actively working. And then uh, uh, it's just all these ideas and stuff. Um, so board view and list view definitely has its uses. So um, that being said, um, if there are any projects or any questions, I won't set this up. I did want to go over one last thing though. Something that I found really, really useful is another recent addition and that is incompletable tasks. So if I, let's go ahead, go to view as list again. If I go ahead and up here, add task, if I put an asterisk before it and hit a space, um, let's just put an exclamation mark emoji. That's kind of irrelevant. Um, class meets Tuesday through Friday from 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, and we'll click that to remove the day and I hit add task. You cannot check off this task. So this is something that I've used very few times, but it's great if you have something that has a lot of subtasks, but technically should never be completed. So one example might be, I think I have one under Minecraft. Yeah. So we have a budget and notes and expenditures thing. And I just change that because the task is never going to be checked off. Whenever we spend something money on something, we just put it in a comment. Um, and we move on. The task itself, never going to be checked off. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's kind of that. Now, uh, I just to go over the premium features, I just want to also preface this by saying, you know, I'm not trying to sell you anything. People have asked about it. I personally don't think that you need um, the the premium features for Todoist. There are things like labels. So if I click um, at assignments, which is a label that I've made, all that allows you to do is organize things by assignments. Um, I don't have any due this week, but this might be filtered by all, everything tagged with assignments and due this week. I forced myself to make these just to be like, Mark, use them. I do use comments all the time. They're really nice and easy to just leave comments on things like nice reminders. So checking with moderators, these are some questions I need to ask them. And then there's calendar integration, but uh, I never, uh, never use calendar integration because I have my own time blocking set up. Um, ooh, some questions. What are the advantages of using Todoist instead of Notion? Uh, we'll jump into Notion in about five minutes and I'll just kind of go over a few things. To quickly answer your question, um, Notion for me is something that is quite complex and I believe it should be used for big overarching projects. Um, also a quick note about the Todoist desktop app. There is one, but it does have sizing issues. So if you have it as a half screen thing, it can sometimes be buggy. Uh, which is why I'm showing you on the, the web version, but it can be nice because Todoist does work offline. I'm a student and I got 70% off for Todoist Premium, so I pay $12 a year for it uh, or something like that. So, you know, if you find yourself, um, you know, tomorrow, I like to see what I'm doing tomorrow. I have tasks tagged as dailies. Um, took this from Habitica though. 
tasks for hobby projects. If it's got an at hobby task, it goes a bunch across a bunch of different. Um, wow, there's a lot of stuff on here. Yeah, it, it, they're they're all aesthetic. So, yeah, if you, if you you can apply for a student discount and they they send, can they email you and you know, but honestly, I'd recommend using Todoist. And if it works for you, maybe consider the premium. But as it goes with all these productivity apps, like for me, Habitica was great for a while, but then I started not using it as much because I simply didn't need, uh, need it. So if you use Todoist and you find that it works for you, great. If you find that it doesn't, no problem. Um, you know, whatever works best for you. And you know, you're the one who's being productive. You're the one who's getting places, not the apps. The apps help you get things out of your head and organize on paper so you can think about things more. Uh, before we fully jump into this, um, does anybody have any last minute does anybody have any last minute Todoist questions? I started using Todoist just to jot down ideas to remind myself things and I just slowly started using it more and more. But yeah, um, the Todoist smartphone app, I love it. Um, personally, again, I pull out my phone, I type in, you know, idea for this or new homework assignment for this. That way I don't have to consistently remind myself the entire day. Hey Mark, don't forget to write this down. Hey Mark, don't forget to put this in your calendar. Hey Mark, hey Mark, 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 Mark. So this part of the workshop Wednesday was kind of, um, very quote unquote, very organized for Todoist on what I was going to do. The next part is going to be me going through Notion, two or three of my project setups in Notion and kind of discussing the different features of it. If you have any specific questions, feel free to throw them on Discord. I will keep an eye on the channel. Excuse me, this is a much less, oh, the hiccup today, a much less uh, directed or organized component of the, uh, not video, sorry, of the workshop Wednesday live stream. So definitely don't hesitate to jump in with questions. But um, the first question, or the first question, first workspace, I want, mm, actually, you know, let's start from the top. <laughs> Notion is pretty much an all-in-one productivity app. And whereas Todoist's main feature might be something like uh, natural language processing to get your tasks organized, um, or, you know, to-do list tasks that you check off, Notion's main thing is workspaces and pages. So, if I go ahead and click add a page, we get this fresh page. And this is where everything takes place. You make sub pages, pages, as you can see in the bottom here, they can look like a table, a board, a list, a calendar, a gallery, a timeline. There are just so many different options. Um, what I can actually do is compare my lifestyle videos on Notion setup with my Trello setup. That might be interesting. Anyway, one of the workspaces I have on Notion is my notes. Um, so I had a bunch of classes this past semester, five, um, which you can kind of see, uh, cultures class, semantics, operating systems, cognition, and graphics. This was my, this was my setup. I took, um, notions default list view to put in all of my notes and, um, I don't know, you can do a bunch of things, but on the right here, you click new, you click new notes page and it automatically creates a new page. You can add whatever emoji you want. Actually, I kind of stole it from notion, which is why I put emojis in front of everything on Todoist and Trello. Um, but you can change what class it's for. So I have five little, these are pretty much labels. Um, what type it is, lecture, recitation, a seminar. And I would upload any class notes if they're there to this material. You can also create different views. So on the list view here, um, I can go, okay, only my OS notes. Um, okay, only my cognition notes. And you'd be, you'd be given them all here. Now, I don't think I'm going to do this this semester, but it was fun to experiment with and fun to organize. And it definitely worked um, because one of the great things you can do is export your notes to PDF from Notion. Um, but yeah, this is one way to organize them. So if I open my semantics notes on sarcasm, for example, it's intro to semant. Actually, we're going to use a different example. Um, file systems two, operating system. Uh, so week two, lecture two, file systems two. I just took notes as they came along. One of the best things about Notion, in my opinion, is this toggle tab. Um, so if you, I guess you kind of, this is where part of the learning curve comes in. I'm going to go to the bottom here to edit this. If you put a dash, you get a bulleted list. If you put a little carrot, you get a toggle. Uh, if you put a star, I think, okay, you get a bulleted list still. Um, this is markdown. So three heading three heading one. If you type slash notion is all these different options for blocks and it just keeps going. And there's so much that you can do. Um, which is kind of why I think it's a steep learning curve because sometimes there's things that can really suit your workflow that you just don't know exist. But you can change the text color, background color, put comments, all of these different blocks, code blocks, quote blocks, there's just all this different stuff. So definitely if you want to kind of jump into Notion, I would definitely give it a shot. 
um, and kind of mess around. Type in slash, see what's there, see what looks good. And, you know, you can go in and you can have all of these pages. You know, you don't have to organize all these labels and stuff. You don't need them. The reason why they exist is because you can create all of these different filters. So what's something, do I have anything else that's more filtered? I guess lifestyle videos. Um, so I can have all of my videos here. You know, I don't need these tags. I don't need to put what status they're in. Um, but if I go to board, boom, status view. So if I'm in research, you can switch to scripting. Wonderful. You can go to publish dates. The calendar view is kind of nice. I can see when all of these videos need to be published. Um, you know, currently working. If I want to focus my view on what I'm working on for now, that's it. And actually just in terms of things, if I go to all videos, I stopped using, so I, I, so if I open each one, these are kind of in-depth pages, but again, this is, you know, this is where it kind of comes in. You can format things on the left, on the right, you can have sub pages. So this is research and notes. Um, I put the link to the video and the thing once it's uploaded, I have some resources on the side here. So whenever I make a new video page, all of this automatically gets filled in. I put it in, I have a publishing checklist sub page. I have an editing checklist sub page. It just ended up being way more than I needed. And it was just kind of a lot. Um, you know, as that nerd said, Notion does everything. Does it do it the best? Eh. Um, oh, welcome back, Selectric. Let me know if you have any Notion questions. This is kind of a less direct kind of thing. But um, so this is the Notion version of this. Um, and personally, I love this a lot more. It follows the same exact thing. So if I have a video template uh, about time blocking is what I'm sort of working on. I have two checklists, video checklist and then an upload checklist. Very similar to, you know, if I go ahead to, let's do this one. Editing checklist. I realized, you know, it's so much to have one new page for every checklist and stuff. And it just, it just felt like a lot. It felt like a lot. So I just made them into smaller checklists on Trello. Um, you know, for every status label that these videos might have over on, where is it? Status, you know, they're all published. I have writing, filming, editing, review, and thumbnail, and published. And for Trello, I put them into four different published lists. Um, and I just enjoy this a lot more. For the tags, I just have them as little labels, day in the life, fun. Um, let's see, what is one that I, was this one? When I, yeah, so I have some video notes when I come up with the idea. What I do is when I come up with the idea, I put it on Todoist, and then I look for a video idea for the week, and boom, I bring it into Trello. And then I fill it out. I have a script here and another app called Relanota. Um, any, you know, resources I might need, timestamps for when I review the video, comments, review, some helpful links, same exact thing for Notion, but I just prefer this and Trello versus Notion. Um, and then one other thing that I am currently using Notion for is the game I'm working on. Um, I do have a Trello board for it, which I'll sort of show. Um, and so this kind of comes back to Carolyn Catalan's, um, I guess, note about Todoist and Trello of short-term versus long-term, current release tasks, what I'm working on right now, what I need to do for today, what's in progress, what's testing room. These are gonna happen over months at a time, if not years, you know? Um, and that's what all these are for. Meanwhile, in Todoist, um, for Seashell, we have just some really generic things to check off. Um, and in Notion, I have everything in much, much more detail because Trello isn't great for the planning side of things. Um, for example, a lot of things like this might be remain, might be, um, I don't know why this is here. Um, there's a little sub page in here. You can't do that on Trello. The, the page template works really well for this because I'm writing things out that I might need for prototype zero. Um, you can change the font if you want, but you know, um, and that's in the versions window. So it, it, Notion can be really nice for this when you have to have a lot of in-depth things and something like that. But um, if you need it for something shallow, it might not be the best bet. Uh, and then masterclass notes, very simple. Um, if I go into, let's say, Art of Negotiation with Chris Voss, I made a new page for every single uh, lecture that he went over. We ha I embedded the PDF workbook. If you go into my notes, you can just find the real quick bulleted list. Um, and along with a lot of apps, Trello, Todoist, and Notion included, um, you can use Markdown. And I would definitely recommend becoming familiar with Markdown. So yeah, so it's definitely a good question um, because if there was, you know, Notion, you can put in to-do lists. 
you uh, in Trello you can have a card every day um, to make these check marks, these to-do lists. In Todoist, you could make a board view and structure it so that it works like Trello. If you have premium, you can use labels as Trello labels and you can attach images. It is a lot to manage. Um, for me, I the I guess there's sort of two ways to answer your question. More generally, I think that if you find something that works for you, absolutely go for it. <clears throat> um, for example, uh, and to sort of go into my second point, I use Todoist and Trello as if they are one application. And I also have my calendar as a part of that. So for example, when I'm you know scheduling the day ahead, I will go ahead, I'll open Todoist, um, and I'll look at upcoming, well, specifically I'll look at tomorrow. And I'll think, okay, scrolling through, I have backgammon at one. So I'll open up my calendar app and type in backgammon at one. Um, you know, maybe block out an hour. 7 p.m. karate, okay, let's make sure I have karate in at 7 p.m. And then I'll think, okay, tomorrow, oh, I need to do a Udemy art lesson. I'll go ahead into my calendar and make that time block. Um, let's see, you know, and then, do I have time tomorrow to do the two minute morning routine? That's a video idea, but do I have time tomorrow to finish up the um, the keyboard video? So then I go into my calendar app and do that. And then in Trello, very similar thing. If I go to, let's say lifestyle, um, I have an idea for a keyboard video. Okay, let me go ahead into Trello and make the card. So in a lot of ways, the it's a lot to micromanage, but they all work together. And that's how I personally work best. But if you find that that's too much for you, there is definitely a way to cut down. Because one of the things I, you know, there's so many YouTubers who are like sponsored by Notion and they always talk about Notion, but sometimes they, it's almost like they put too much reliance on Notion itself. And so using apps to organize and to be productive, it should be however you want to use it. If it's something that hinders you, stop. <laughs> if it's something that helps, I would say keep going for it. If I used Trello and Todoist totally separately, I would probably be, be pretty hindered. And <clears throat> something like Notion, that's why I stopped using it because I couldn't integrate Trello and Notion for my videos. So I switched my videos from Notion to Todoist. Um, so I don't know, I guess the answer to your question is like, they all work together. So I don't have to worry about one thing, you know, where something might be because I know for every video in Todoist, it's got a compliment in Trello. For you know some task on Seashell, I know that there's a part of it that is on the Notion page. So they all kind of work together. And again, you know that's kind of why I stopped using Notion because a lot of the things were too separated. If I go ahead and pull um, Todoist to the left here, uh, hopefully I don't have anything incriminating on my calendar, but we'll go ahead and move it to the left or to the right. Um, so. I guess last week, so I'm on break, so I haven't really been scheduling much, but yesterday uh, I sat down at the end of the day and I looked at my to-dos for today and I said, okay, I need to finalize script. I need to do this bingo thing with my friend. I need to record the video. I have workshop Wednesday. And these were all on my Todoist when I clicked on tomorrow. And so I just filled in the time blocks on my calendar. And so that's kind of an example of how you can use multiple apps to do one thing, as opposed to strictly using my calendar for scheduling and strictly using Todoist for whatever else. And again, this is something that just works for me. If you want to try copying it, go for it. I've kind of come up with sort of my own system by taking from like 15 different YouTubers from different people on KOA. I go ahead and you know take stuff from them and I merge it into my own thing. And that's how I would recommend you do it stuff yourself. It took about 13 months for me to finally be like, you know what? This works. <laughs> anyway, um, my throat's getting a bit hoarse, but that is it for the first official workshop Wednesday. Does anybody have any final questions? It could be Todoist, it could be Notion, it could be Trello. It could be what you wanna see in the next workshop Wednesday. Table view, gallery view, and how filters work. Yes. Okay, let's create a fake project. We're gonna, for my narrative. My game design class this winter, we're gonna choose the bowling pins. I don't know why, but we will. So we're gonna go ahead and say new, uh, actually wait, no, not empty page. We want a table, right. So table view, gallery view, and health filter. This is the table, uh, table view. Um, so how, how to put, so okay, we're gonna create a new page. How pages work 
Um, I'm going to, I'm going to keep the chat scroll up just so I don't lose this message. How pages work is they all have a bunch of different properties, right? And I'm going to make a few properties tags. Tags can really be anything. Um, project, it can be quiz. It can be test, right? Let's just make those three simple tags. Um, if you only want one, there is a single select tag. You can choose all these different things. So I'll just choose select and it's, look, it's a project, um, property. Let's go ahead and say, this is a date and let's say due date. Uh, and let's say that's, I don't know, do the first, right? So this is, oh, let's, let's give the, this give, this is the name, right? So project one, whatever. Um, and let's go ahead and say homework one. Um, I say homework, but I'm going to call it a quiz. We're going to put, say the due date is the second. Um, so first things first, right from table view, um, you can modify the properties of the pages right from here. So if I go ahead and open homework one now, after modifying each column in the table, hit open and you can see the properties show up there. Um, so another example of this would be in my class notes, go to operating systems. Um, this is list view, but you have the properties here. If I go ahead and go to board view, so we have the name, the class, the created materials reviewed and the type. Um, so that's table view gallery view. I, will it show up here? Yeah. Um, so gallery view has a very specific purpose in my eyes, which I'll go over in a minute. It's essentially like list view, but it should be kept for bigger things. <laughs> so, uh, I, oh, did I delete my danger by dev page? I did I No, game design should have a gallery view. Yes. So game design tab, these are a bunch of different projects and this is what I would recommend using gallery view for. And then I'll get into filters. Um, gallery view should be restricted to projects that have these big oversights, these big overviews. And so if I click on something like seashell, this is mishap, but it would go to something like this, which has its own, you know, full list of things, you know, you might have, I could have NYU fall 2020, and I could have it just show the different classes. So speaking of that, filters, going back to how I mentioned that pages each have, and I'll just use my class things, why not? Each page has all these different properties, right? So we have a created date, a class, a type. When you go into views, you can make a new view. This one, for example, is filtered by class. It shows only indigenous Australia, which is my cultures class. So if I click on filter here, you can see where class is indigenous Australia. I could say where class is not indigenous Australia. Um, maybe you, these, the rest are going to load in a second, but maybe you dropped a class, right? And you don't want to go through and delete everything. So you just quickly change the filter. Um, I'm going to change that back, but filters can get very in depth and you can create some pretty complex systems. Um, so if I go into table view again, so a table view that I can modify, uh, we go into filter, add a filter, you can filter group, whatever. You can really just mess around. But um, what filters do is they look at the properties of pages because every page in a list or a table will have the same properties. So if I make you know this page and I click add property uh, test, then I go back, you can see this column was added. Every other page in this table or database will also have this test property. And if I delete it, it deletes it for every single page. And that right there, those properties, oh yeah, Thomas Frank, he has a note-taking notion system that I think is overkill, but it's very cool. He goes really in depth on how filters and stuff can be used to link pages and projects. I take a lot of inspiration from him in my own videos as well. So big props to Frank, Thomas Frank, um, but yeah. So, you know, click filter, add a filter you know, where, I don't know, I could do um, created, let's say this was due date, is before um, one week from now. And, okay, well that kind of shows everything, but I don't know, uh, one thing I see is, you know, if you have a due date tab, let's say this created thing is a due date. Um, whoops, thank you, thank you computer. Uh, so this, let's just say this is due date, we can go ahead and say completed. And if I have the filter saying, show everything where the due date is before one week from now, and where, let's see, completed is not checked. So this will this is gonna show all of my projects. You know, we could actually even go even more in depth. Let's add a filter group. 
I was going to say where it's one week from now and where it's uh, from today. But anyway, filters can be... Yeah, filters filters are automatically applied to the view that you're actively on. So here I'm on, you know, table view. This filter will stay for table view. If you want to save your filter, just click add a view. So if I go to cognition, the only filter is where class is cognition. If I go to intro to semantics, the filter is where class is intro to semantics. I, I would definitely just recommend messing around a lot with Notion. One of the things I have for this is a mini game I'm working on. And I just wrote up this entire, you know, this is how the game works down to the smallest of details. And I have a little issue tracker development log and it's just a, a nice Kanban board. I don't think, I don't know if I use it. I have a small word list, easy words. These are all user submitted, it's a lot of words and a list of all hard words. Uh, Wasp is definitely not. So I guess the way to answer your question is that filters are automatically saved to, to, to switch on and off, change views. So like if I go over here, um, I mean, you would delete, you could delete the filter, but uh, so this is list view. This is all of my classes, right? And I want to create a new filter. So I'm going to create a new view and I want to filter by indigenous Australia to, in order to, you know, quote unquote, turn off this filter. I'm just going to change the views back. I'm just going to quickly show you what that looks like in Todoist. So if I say, um, homework due December 28th, uh, shoot, <laughs> homework due December 28th, 2020. So it says it's at the dates in red here. And that means it's overdue. Um, and as a result, if I click on it, I have to reassign it a new day. So in terms of fighting the backlog, you know, if, uh, I don't know, buy new shoes, right? I finally quote unquote found time to put it in for today. I meant to do it like a week ago. If you can't do it tomorrow, if you can't do it the day after, um, something, this is a strategy, I guess I've taken from Todoist. Every time you move the task back, make it a higher priority. So buying new shoes. That's really not important when I have finals going on. So I'm going to move it to next week and make it a third priority thing. Oh, I might say hi to some friends, play some game with some friends. Okay, well, I'm not going to go buy new shoes. Priority two. Just two days ago, I was like, hold on. I've had my current shoes for 15 months now. My PT has told me to get new ones. All right, this is now a priority one task because I've pushed it off like four or five times. So what I would say is maybe in your Trello thing, add some labels that kind of in a way mock to do this and priority one, priority two, priority three. And so the higher priority it is, the less likely it is to be moved to a backlog. Because what I found for myself, at least, is that the harsh reality is if I move something to a backlog 15 times over the course of two weeks, I'm just going to delete it. Because if I've moved it that much, it's just not that urgent. And if it is that urgent, you know, I should just get, get it done, for example. Um, so that's kind of my two cents on it. The Kanban boards are just nice. I think Notion... Notion's definitely meant all their databases, their table views, whatever. I just, they're just really designed to be within pages. And you know, Trello's designed to be nothing but a Kanban board in a lot of ways, so. Thanks for coming by, Ariba. I'm glad you found it informative. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Yeah, I, I do remember going over that as well, so. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great way to structure your tasks. Um, for example, one of, the, one of the things that can be really easy to, to push off is self-care, so. Um, whatever that might mean for you, it's really easy to say, oh, my assignments are more important. But if you haven't done some self-care task for four days, make it a priority. Um, and, you know, that's just a nice reminder of what supersedes what, because priorities, I don't know, that, that's how we make choices. Something that's more important takes priority. But yeah, thank you everybody so much for coming out to Workshop Wednesday today. That was pretty fun. Hopefully it went well. If you have suggestions for what app we'll go into next, definitely let me know. Maybe Obsidian and a Notion combo if I can come up with a system while I take notes this upcoming semester. Have a great rest of your day, evening, morning, whatever it is for you guys. And until next time, have a good one.